Oh yeah, Rivers here with some cool tech, and I've got the CX919 quad-core Android mini PC here. First, let's take a look at what else comes in the box. You've got a full-size HDMI extension cable, a 2-amp power adapter, the power cord which is, uses micro USB, and a color user manual. The HDMI cable is about 12 inches long, and its intended use is if you want to put the CX919 behind your TV. The CX has a nice glossy finish, so it matches a lot of electronics that have come out in the last few years. Inside we've got a quad-core Rockchip 3188A9 CPU, quad-core Mali 400 GPU, 2 gigs of DDR3 DRAM, 8 gigs of NAND flash, Wi-Fi 802.11b, g, and n that work really well by the way, plus Bluetooth 4.0 and your choice of Android 4.11 or 4.22. On the front you've got a full-size HDMI 1.4 port. On the back you've got two USB ports, one full size and one micro. This micro USB port is used for updating the CX and the micro USB port on the side is used for powering it. You've also got a micro SD card slot and your flash mode button on this side. And finally on the other side it's got this folding external antenna. I tested it and it works great. I'll show you the results in a minute. Here's what you'll see when you boot up the CX919 for the first time. So it's got this kind of customized wood look launcher to it and they've kind of went through and picked out the commonly used apps and organized it for you so I really like that. People who don't want to mess with anything are going to really enjoy this because they don't have to bother customizing out Android. So it comes with pretty much all the common apps that you could need. So here's your browser, calculator, calendar, Chrome browser, downloads, uh, DNLA, streaming, email, photo gallery, music player, play store, controller configuration, recorder, video playback, uh, and mirroring. Also the graphics look really crisp and clear. The icons are well defined and the apps and web pages look good. So what if you don't like the way the launcher looks? Well there's lots of other launchers you can install. This is Next Launcher. You could also install Go Launcher HD, ADW Launcher, Nova Launcher, Apex Launcher, and lots of others. Next Launcher is one of my favorites because it has lots of animations and it's pretty fast. Here's Go Launcher HD. It's nice and snappy and super easy to configure. And this is ADW Launcher. I like it because it has really good crisp looking icons and they're big too. Alright, now let's look at the settings and then we'll do a few benchmarks. So here in the settings you can see it's got the option for screen captures. Also I like the way the settings menus all have custom icons that are colorful and stuff. It's kind of a nice change of pace. And here in storage you can see it's got a gig for app storage and then the rest of the space is going for your data storage. So about almost 6 gigs for data storage. And the version of Android that we're running for all the tests is 4.11. 4.2 just came out, so I'll put information about 4.2 and 4.1 in the video description and which one I think is better. So check down there. Okay, time to run a few tests on here. So just a quick uh, CPU info. So CPU is a rock chip uh, quad core. You can see the four cores there, 1.6 gigahertz, and it's a full 1.6 gigahertz. And it's a neon device. There's all your uh, caches and different settings and instruction sets. And this 4.11 ROM is not rooted. The 4.22 ROM is rooted though. Uh, it kind of depends what you want, but root is not really necessary. It's nice sometimes to install certain apps. Next up is the Linpack test, and this guy has been running really fast for me. Anywhere from 120s to 130s, so one of the fastest ones I've tested actually. I think it's got a really good ROM on it as far as speed goes. It's nice and snappy. And finally I ran Antutu on here and it got about an average score for a quad-core rock chip CPU. Still pretty good for a stock ROM though. Maybe one component on there, like say the NAND is slow, because it tests all the components and if one is slow it'll bring the whole score down. Anyways, it's a nice, fast, uh, snappy Android Mini PC. It handles well. And now for the highlight of the CX919, the networking. So let's test out the big antenna on this amp. Here's the way I tested it. I used two tests, Wi-Fi Analyzer, and I measured the time it took to copy and paste a file over the network. I did this at two different distances, one 10 feet from my router and the other on the other side of the house about 40 feet away through the floor and a few walls. I also compared it against four other devices, three quad cores and my Galaxy S3 phone. The results are a little bit hard to understand because Wi-Fi Analyzer measures in negative numbers. Basically, the higher the number or the less negative it is, the better the signal. I put this chart up to show how the device is all compared. The CX919 came in number one for signal strength out of all five devices. 
The file copy test is a little bit easier. The shortest transfer time is the best. Again, the CX919 beat all five devices except in one test. The Samsung Galaxy S3 did win the long distance file transfer only. To me, this proves that the CX919 has one of the better Wi-Fi signals that I've seen. Okay, I know the new 4.2 ROM was just released today while I was making this. I know it has a working Bluetooth and Netflix is working on 4.2.2 now, so uh, I'll put more notes about updates in the comments down below. Also, I'll put together a chart with the networking results and put it up on Facebook, so come visit me there and you can get a closer look at the charts. I'll put links to all the hardware and software in the video in the description down below. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, make sure and subscribe to my channel. I release new videos about once a week. Don't forget to hit that like button down there, and as always, aloha.